Hey guys, Simon and Alex here from Top Tennis Training. Uh, we're here in Argentina. Uh, we've come down to do some filming and some work with David Nalbandian. I uh, hope you check out those videos. Uh, they're going to be out there on the internet pretty soon. Maybe they're already out there if you're watching this video later. Uh, in this video, we're going to discuss a little bit about strings, string tensions, uh, rackets, uh, everything to do with equipment. Yeah. Uh, and we want you to guys to get involved, leave comments underneath at any point in the video. If you think uh, you agree with something, you disagree with something, or you have something that you may want to add or share with us uh, and with the rest of the uh, community, feel free to leave a comment underneath. So, let's start with, uh, with strings. Yep. What kind of strings are you using at the moment? Currently using Pro uh, Hurricane. Okay, so it's Babalat. Yep. Pro, uh, Pro Hurricane. Yep. Uh, that's a polyester string, isn't Quite it? Quite a tough one as well. It's like kind of like barbed wire. Yeah. <laughs> if it cuts you when you're stringing it, you'll yeah, you no, get it's, a cut. It's yeah. A, it's, it's quite a tough string, so yep. a lot of the players they prefer a slightly tougher string. One because it makes it it makes the the racket last longer. Yep. You obviously don't break as many strings. Usually they maintain tension a little bit longer as well. Yeah. So if you string with that with that string throughout your whole racket, that racket is going to maintain ten tension for a little bit longer than something like a synthetic gut and definitely something like the natural gut. Yeah. For those strings, even pre-stretching a string is very common where. Uh, they would string really tight and they would have to kind of string the, the string again because it's stretched during the stringing process so there'll be a pre-stretch going on and now with the current machines like the current electric machines it does automatically but in the olden times you had to kind of string double the weighted one, twice yeah. yeah you had to do it twice there, yeah. just to make sure that the string is actually pre-stretched and then yeah. it stretches again but with the, with, the, with the current polyester strings that doesn't happen yeah. um, Again, I'd say it's quite a tough string, isn't it? It is so tough. The, tough the new the polyesters like the RPM Blast, yeah, uh, and even the Luxilon Big Banger Big Bang, yeah. and uh, the Alu Power, they Big Banger Original, they're a little bit softer too. So if you if even More when you even when you're clamping the string. It, the, the clamp almost Easier. digs into the string a little bit yeah. more, whereas uh, a Pro Hurricane is quite a tough string. So I'd say for the arm, it'd probably be a good string to use, a polyester string, but a slightly softer one. Yeah. Because uh, the Pro Hurricane over a period of time can cause, can build up, can build up you know. But what, it, what a polyester string does do is give you that consistent hit. Yeah. So the string doesn't really move that much because it's that polyester, it, it always slides back into position. It's quite a smooth string. Uh, and it doesn't catch like the ball fluff yeah. and, and, and core, bits yeah. of the core onto the string so it doesn't get left behind it always goes back into this nice shape and you always get that consistent hit so if you continue playing for hours you're always going to have this, yeah, the strings that don't really move as much yeah. which, is, which is quite a good thing and what about you? Which string do you play with? I also play with a polyester string. At the okay. moment I play with RPM Blast. Um, I used to play with a string called Signum Pro. Me, and, yeah, and it was well. Signum Pro Poly Plasma. It's an orange string some of the pros used to use. Uh, it lasts for ages. It lasts for a very long That's time. Why I with it. Yeah. And it's a slightly softer forgiving string, yeah. but it's also polyester and it gave me that consistent hit which I liked. Almost a bit of a dead feel to the racket. Also gives a lot of spin as well, doesn't it? Exactly. Yeah. So yeah, I, I really like playing with them, you know, throughout my my career I changed my strings a little bit I played around with things I even played with a, um, a hybrid string yeah. where I gave uh, I did a synthetic guard on the crosses and um, the mains would be uh, polyester but that I felt like it my strings moved too much for one uh, and it didn't give me that same pop. consistent feel and pop yeah. on the ball and I some players really like it. For example, I know Federer, he uses the yeah. natural guard, but he actually uses it in the mains. Okay. And then he uses a polyester on the cross because when you hit the ball, it's actually your mains that are taking the main most of, the, of, most it, of yeah. the hit. Uh, and that's why usually the pros only really break their mains. Yeah. So you know actually how you're hitting the ball. If you're hitting with a lot of spin and you're hitting the ball well, you'd be breaking the mains. Yeah. Whereas if you're hitting really flat, like the coaches, like since I've started coaching, I'm only breaking the, 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 crosses. the crosses, you know, and I'm, that's what makes me feel like, oh my god, you know, I'm starting I'm to lose worse. a little bit, I'm getting worse, you know, because the, 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 usually you never get to the, to the point where you're breaking crosses yeah. uh, as a pro. Sometimes you'll break a few at the same time, yeah. and a cross could be in there because it's, you know, it when it's, snaps when at once, yeah. a big but, shot, yeah. but it, usually when you're, when you're breaking it would be the, uh, the, mains. the mains. I mean, yeah. I used to break, on the clay especially, when I played with, uh, with Alu Power, um, 
I used to break strings every hour. That's crazy. So uh, if I if I went to a tournament, I had to that's have so, so that's, much money. <laughs> I, for and, and because they didn't they didn't sponsor me at the time, and I had to buy my own string, that's why I had to change, and I ended up going for Signum Pro because okay. it was a similar string, but cheaper to buy, yeah. and, it, and it lasted, lasted, it lasted so much a little longer. bit longer. But because of the Luxor was a little bit softer, it used to break way too often for me. But the feel it gave was, was amazing. I'd say that's one of the best strings for me. A natural gut, what does this do to your tennis game and what does it do for the ball? So everything? natural gut, it's uh, it's a little bit more springy on the racket. Because it's a, it's a softer string yeah. uh, and it stretches a lot. So when you do hit the ball, it, there's a lot of like, the it almost feels like the ball goes back and then it gets pushed out forward. So you get a lot of power from the ball. Uh, you get a lot of feel on the ball because the ball gets left on the strings for a little bit longer, longer. than yeah. usual. You know, something like a polyester would pop the ball out bam, bam. quicker, whereas the, uh, the, the natural gut would kind of catch, like, it. catch the ball yeah. and then release it. Uh, and that split second difference actually gives you a little bit more feel, a little bit more control. But uh, that that trampoline feeling on the racket, I actually didn't like. So Some players don't it, like it. Yeah, yeah, it it suits certain players, but it actually doesn't suit certain players. So. Yeah. Try it out guys, again it's very expensive it's to use. It's ridiculously expensive. It's yeah. expensive to use and for what it gives you, if and it gives you enough benefit, then definitely use it. But for me, I, I, I definitely didn't, didn't like it. It doesn't last very long either. Yeah. It lasts. Something that also happens if it rains, if you, if you catch it's a little finished. bit of you know, yeah. water, if it's more humid in the air, humidity in the air, that string is actually going to fall Gone. apart a little bit yeah. as well. And it, you're, you're going to break that, you know, it starts fraying bit yeah. by bit and then you, you, yeah, you, start, you start losing bits of the string and then eventually it breaks. So. I mean, it's a tough one. Synthetic gut? Have you ever played with synthetic gut? I tried it, but it moves too much for me. Yeah, I you think end up gaps, getting those gaps. Those huge gaps. It's and then more forgiven, though. No? Yeah, and you, and you, hit, you hit a ball, and all of a sudden it hits the back fence. You're like, yeah. what? Why did I hit the back fence? And you see a big train track on the middle of your <laughs> racket. You know, it's like. But sometimes players actually don't mind it. I think it actually suits the the spinny players. So if you're playing a lot on clay, that movement of string doesn't actually affect the. Uh, the hit because yeah. you're accelerating the racket up you're still getting enough bite on the string and actually having less string that bites the ball actually gives the ball more spin uh, that's why some of the, the, the new rackets yeah the exactly. new rackets they have that you know the less, bigger yeah lanes and less, less crosses. mains less yeah. crosses and that that again gives that, that feeling the gaps yeah. actually gives it more rotation or almost more ball. bite on the ball more pop yeah but for the flatter hitter, I'd say you have to have more string, yep. uh, give and you more, more one. control, and a slightly tighter restring, and you definitely don't want to move the rackets, uh, the, the strings too much. So I think a synthetic gut would, wouldn't really suit that player. I think the main thing with any string is to try it out. Make, See which one you, yeah. Yeah, you prefer. Experiment and just try out the hybrids, try out the polyester, try out the, the synthetic gut, and something that is affordable for you as well, because at the end of the day, you yeah, might you're love the one that's going to be playing exactly. with it, you know, and uh, yeah, you don't want to invest financially too much uh, yeah. unless you think you know it's worth it. So, what about string tension? So personally, I always I change string tensions quite a bit, and yeah. I, I think it actually varies depending on where you are playing of in the course, world. Yeah. So if you go to somewhere that's high altitude and the balls are flying, you definitely want a tighter restring. Because a tighter restring doesn't let the ball pop out again. It doesn't have that trampoline feeling where the ball will fly off your strings and go to the back yeah. fence. You want to have a tighter restring where it almost feels a little bit deader, but the ball doesn't go as far. Uh, and it gives you that ability to generate still the same spin, yeah. uh, the same shots, but actually feels a little bit more in control. Yeah. Whereas somewhere where you come to a, to a tournament, and actually you feel like, oh my god, I'm getting no power. I'm hitting it's as hard cold. as I can. Yeah. It's cold. Maybe it's sea level. Maybe the, the the weather is. You can have quite heavy balls if yeah. the, if the balls have absorbed Clay a little court. bit of uh, moisture yeah. in it. You need a little bit looser string, yeah. and, and it is going to save your arm a little bit as well. So if you're feeling like you've got a, a few injuries, you're carrying maybe a shoulder injury or a wrist injury, a good idea would be to go a little bit lower on the tension, give you give that string a little bit of forgiveness. You know, yeah. you want to give be able to have a softer feel on it. Uh, personally, I played with, I started with 62. That's very pounds, tight. So it, it was quite tight, and as I grew older, I went to 60, then 58, 56, and when I went to Spain, I went down to 50. Yeah. And even 48 I tried and my the coach Power. I was working with at the time Ferran Ventura he uh, you know he was of the, th of the thought that if you can control the ball you should go as low as possible uh, <laughs> just because it gives you that ability the strings to move and I was playing a lot more on clay uh, and it gives you a lot more bite on the string and you can actually hit the ball uh, m with more spin yeah. but still have the power to carry the ball forward 
So if you have a really tight racket and you go for spin, the balls will end up landing quite short because spin obviously takes away distance. Whereas if I have a slightly softer racket face and I go for spin, I've still got the distance that gets given to me from the racket because of that trampoline action and I'm still giving the, the maximum spin that I can give. So a lot of the spinnier players, the ones that give a lot of top spin, yeah. I'm sure Nadal would go for a slightly uh, lower tension, tension yeah. just to give himself that ability to generate power after his spin. And what about the racket? Favorite racket of all time? So my best results always came with uh, the powerful rackets. Like I, I, I liked to get rocket launchers, the rocket launchers. You know, and I, yeah. <laughs> At one point, I actually had this feeling that you know that they should be illegal just because they were giving me so much power. You know. Yeah. Now I kind of, I think the more the because it was a babble at pure drive, but now the more the the newer ones come out, they almost dampen that. That feel. That, that feel of giving a lot of power and they become more control based and, yeah. and I actually prefer the older versions and I think the, the original pure drives, oh, like the ones that Moya so used to use and even Roddick, like, Roddick yeah. like they, they were the, they were they were the rocket, big, launchers. rocket launchers, you know, and I think yeah. that those are the rackets of the that, that really would give you something extra. Now, I think there's so many brands out, like I actually play with the Wilson now and I really enjoy it. Um, I mean, control, what, what racket it? do you play with? I play with a head right now and it's the Radical. Um, it's more of a coach's racket, I think. I wouldn't really play tournaments with it. Yeah. Again, if you're going for more power and you're playing competitions, probably the Babalat, something along those lines, would give you a little bit easier power so you don't have to fight that hard for that same power. Something interesting that I've actually discovered since taking up coaching. Um, when I was when I just started coaching, I thought, oh my god, I'm going to be on court a lot, so I need to have a lighter racket to not, you know, injure my wrist, you know, to give, you know, I want to have, be able to swing it around yeah. for longer, right? So I started playing with a lighter racket, but what I found was all of a sudden my wrist was starting to hurt because <laughs> the ball compared to the racket was actually, you know, it, it mattered more to the racket when it's a lighter racket than when it's a heavier racket. So my racket used to vibrate more every time I hit it, even though I'm, uh, it's, a it's a lighter racket frame. to maneuver. It, the contact that the, on the contact on the racket will, will, make, will actually yeah. make me get more injured. So yeah. that's why the the pros they use a heavier racket because the ball means nothing to it's a heavy st racket. Stability it, it during the so contact. much stability yeah. during contact. When the ball is coming really fast at you, you don't want to be swinging a light racket because that racket is going to be pushed back by the ball yeah. by the speed of the ball, especially when it's a heavy shot. You want to be able to just put the racket there, and the the ball doesn't matter to the racket, doesn't even shake it, and that's why the heavier racket kind of can absorb the ball speed and the ball power a lot better. Yeah. So I actually started coaching now with a, uh, a heavier Stiff racket. Wilson, yeah. yeah. And, it, and it, because it's so heavy, and I just have to literally swing the, the the racket through, and the ball flies off the string. So. Sometimes uh, a lighter racket can actually, uh, a heavier racket can actually save your arm and save your strings, just because uh, and save your wrist or injuries, because you're you're able to just be a little bit more loose and relaxed and don't have to force the ball quite as much. Um, another racket that I used was the Yonex RD7. Uh, this was like a, one of the rackets that came out many Rios years ago. Or... Yeah. So Rios used to use it, Bruguera, Barsategui, okay. uh, a lot of the Spaniards used to use it, but. I mean, Krajicek, I'm sure, I'm, I'm, he played, like, he played Yonex, with a yeah. slightly different one, I think, but it was all part of the same family, and at the time, it was a great racket to use. Um, and Yonex, in general, I think, are quite soft feel rackets. Yeah. Even the new ones that Kyrgios now uses, uh, the Vavrinka racket, yeah. great rackets as well. Like, I really enjoy the, the feel that they give uh, on yeah. the racket. Another interesting thing is, when you are using rackets, how important is that grip that you're holding onto? Because it's something that, for me, like, for example, I could never use a head. Because in my hand, the head, the head has a kind of elongated grip that I that didn't really feel right in my hand. You know, and you, you use, I use the sometimes. head sometimes. Yeah. So and it's got like six overlays. Yeah. So <laughs> it's like a big uh, baseball does bat. It, does, does it, um, if you use, for example, a babalat, would, would the grip shape affect the way you feel I think on the so. racket? I think it does. Everything takes adjustment and it takes getting used to. So whatever racket you're playing with, if you then switch, you feel the differences and it takes, I think it takes probably a couple of, couple of weeks at least to get used to the new frame. Yeah. How often, how often do you start with a new racket, right? And you yeah. you feel absolutely amazing. You're like, oh my God, this racket is for me, right? It suits, and you play, me, perfectly, it suits yeah. me perfectly. You take it, you're like, yeah, this is my racket. You come on and you play the next day and it's like, 
you can't you can play hit with a drop shot. You don't have to yeah, feel yeah, the lobs. Yeah, it's your it's, serve's gone away. It's incredible. Yeah. So really, make sure you test it out, not just for one time, but make sure you give a little bit more yeah. of a period of test time. Period. And actually, play a few pressure situations with it. Play a match. Play something. Play something that matters because, you know, just hitting the ball sometimes doesn't quite give you the the feel, feel of the racket about yeah. how it's going to react to you uh, when you are in those competitive situations. So definitely say play with the racket for a little while before you uh, commit to to making the change what about grips overhead uh, overlays yeah so your favorite grip of all time so for a while I went through using um, toner grips yeah I used to use those a lot and after a while I found out that it was ripping out my hands I just couldn't use it the blisters, yeah. yeah the blisters were getting too much you and have to hold it so you can use it for about 20 30 minutes yeah and, and if you're sweating I it's remember gone. at the time I was thinking, oh great, because I can use one side, then I can flip yeah. it over and use the other side, and because I'm a one hand, I can use it even <laughs> yes, again, I can yeah. flip it, so I could reuse the same grip a few times, Four times know, over, at yeah. trainings, and but then my, my hands were really getting ripped up, and I, and I had to make a change, because it, was, uh, yeah, it, it wasn't good, even though they were really absorbent, I'd say in, in the heat, they are good yeah. grips to have, if you're able to change them, Quite often, they, they yeah. absorb the, the sweat from your hand if, if you're playing in uh, humid conditions. Yeah. Uh, I thought a, the best grip for me was the, the white Wilson Same. tall grip. I mean, so was, easy to play. It was with. just the best grip, and it gives when you I f just first, enough tack yeah. tackiness on it, and yet it and gives it you that absorption. Quite a while as well. It's one of the best grips out there, and I, I would definitely recommend that as an over grip. Yeah. Would you ever play with just the base grip? No. Me too. I it just it's just. If you're sweating, yeah, it's just going to start sliding. It slides and the stuff off. comes off all over your hand as well. That's correct. And also, because it's because it's so close to the racket, it also is, makes the it vibration. Can, yeah, yeah, you feel more vibration. It actually digs into your hand a little yeah. bit more. I would definitely put an overgrip. And hey, if you don't like the overgrip, you can really just change it, and it takes 30 seconds. Yeah. Changing a base grip, I mean, that takes so long. You That's have to take it off. You have to about rip the, it off. What about the guys who take off the base grip and just put an overgrip over grip on the top? That is so bad for you guys. You don't realize. I mean, you know what? But I guess they get so used to feeling the edges on yeah. the racket that they know the exactly bevels. which yeah. part of the grip they're in. They're holding. But I can't imagine you being able to switch grips really effectively. And if you're playing on clay, where you want the racket to like grip and the balls are coming faster you I think you'd rip up your hands a little bit so the ballistas you'd get yeah. from that is yeah. unbelievable yeah I'd say always keep the over grip on the but original you know what that's like that's the same as saying when running you should always use shoes but then you've got Ethiopian players who are running bare feet <laughs> and then they and they get you know yeah. they're winning uh, other things yeah. so for some players obviously it's gonna rip up their hands but if hey if you're used to it and that's what what's what what works for you definitely do it yeah you know why not but I would try all the all the options all beforehand because yeah. I think you can play with a bit more comfort and less pain. And yeah, I think that's I'm exactly. all for that. So guys, share this video with your friends, help us to grow our channel and all the support. We love it and thank you guys so much for the for the support, the emails, the messages. We love reading them and uh, all the best guys. Hey, if you're new to the channel, definitely subscribe to us, press the like button and uh, check out all the other videos that we've got released. Hi, I'm David Robandian, former world number three. If you want to learn the secret of my return, just click the bottom below. For mobile users, please click the link under this video.